A gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico, back at you with episode number 47 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. This is our 64th day of shelter in place here in San Francisco. Today is May 18, 2020. Let's begin, uh, first of all, today, as you know, every Monday is Ketchup Day uh, because we have the whole weekend to get through because of our special edition on Saturday with the Countess Lola Montez. And uh, here's a little trivia question for you today. What is the difference between regular ketchup and fancy ketchup? Well, leave your comments below your answers. And we'll start off uh, with a couple of highlights from San Francisco history, as we always do. Uh, it was on this, in May, sorry, not this day, May 16, 1853, that the Constitution of the California Academy of Sciences is adopted. You know, when I passed away on January 8, 1880, I was heading the California Academy of Sciences, which at that time was at the corner of California and Grant, Caddy Corner to Old St. Mary's cathedral. But uh, this is when the Constitution was adopted for that organization in 1853. And on May 18th of 1925, Donald Dina Cameron takes charge of Sing Choi. Uh, once again, we are reading from John Walston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco. Pick it up. It's a great book. One of the most dramatic stories in the history of San Francisco's Chinatown came to a climax before Superior Court Judge Thomas Graham. Personages, including a young Chinese woman, Sing Choi, her treacherous husband, Lung Kuang, and their four-year-old son, Stuart Milton Lum, and the indomitable Donald Dina Cameron, superintendent of the Presbyterian Mission Home for Chinese Girls, 920 Sacramento Street. Donald Dina Cameron had been born in New Zealand to Scottish parents. Her mother died young, and the father brought his large family to California, where Donald Dina received a strict religious upbringing. Upstanding and attractive, she'd been proposed to three times, but never married. Uh, she made surprise raids on Chinatown brothels, where girls had been forced into prostitution by owners, male and female, who had brought them in from China using go-betweeners who entice girls to come to America by promising them husbands or jobs. Uh, before Judge Graham of the Superior Court, uh, he was to appoint a guardian for Sing Choi's four-year-old son. On the witness stand, Sing Choi related through an interpreter how she was orphaned in China when one month old and was sent with her siblings to live with a family friend in Hong Kong. Her future husband, Lim Kuang, proposed marriage through a matchmaker and brought her to San Francisco, where he told Sing Choi that he'd borrowed money and would sell her into prostitution to pay it back. Donalina Cameron heard of the case and rescued Sing Choi, who was pregnant after she had been heard of the case and rescued, I'm sorry, sorry, who was pregnant after she had been working in a brothel for a week, but Lum Kuang got Sing Choi back by executing an agreement witnessed by the Chinese Consulate General. Eventually, he would renege, and um, she and her son, sorry, he and the son, were sent to Chicago, uh, as was Sing Choi, to be a prostitute. She recognized her cousin Tom Yok Lin, who brought her freedom for $6,550. And um, today, the uh, church where Donaldina Cameron uh, did her work is at 920 Sacramento Street and is now known as the Donaldina Cameron House. It's a, her story is rather fascinating. I know we just touched on it today, so that's definitely one to look into some more. She was uh, regarded uh, somewhat with mixed feelings in Chinatown, especially by the Tongs. Well, let's uh, get into our history for over the weekend. It was in, on May 16, 1866, that Charles E. Hires invented Hires Root Beer. 1868, the U.S. Senate failed to impeach President Andrew Johnson by one vote. 1929, the first Academy Awards are handed out to Wings, and also Emil Jannings and Janet Gaynor. 
It was held at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel directly across the street from Grauman's Chinese and the, I think it's the Dolby Theater now where the Academy Awards are held to this day. In 1943, SS General Jurgen Stroop ordered the burning of the Warsaw Ghetto ending a month of Jewish resistance. 1947, Billie Holiday is arrested in her New York apartment for possession of narcotics. 1965, the Campbell Soup Company introduces SpaghettiOs under its Franco-American brand. 1966, the Beach Boys released their groundbreaking album, Pet Sounds. Well, let's move on to May 17, 1872, the Bohemian Club is incorporated in San Francisco. On May 17, 18, 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court unanimously rules on Brown v. Brown v. Topeka Board of Education reversing the 1896 separate but equal uh, decision ending segregation, supposedly. And then on this date, uh, 1804, Napoleon Bonaparte is proclaimed Emperor of France by the French Senate. We take our title off to all other sovereigns, such as ourselves. 1860, in Chicago, the Republican Convention selected Abraham Lincoln as their candidate. 1897, Dracula is first published by author Bram Stoker. 1926, evangelist Amy Semple McPherson vanishes in Venice, California. She shows up a month later saying that she had been kidnapped. 1927, Grauman's Chinese Theater, which is across the street from the Hollywood Roosevelt, where the first Academy Award ceremony was held, opens in Hollywood, California. 1965, Ray Dolby founds Dolby Laboratories in London, England. 1969, Apollo 10 launches from the Kennedy Space Center and later transmit the first colored pictures of Earth from space. 1970, the Beatles released their, well, the, this is where it gets confusing. Their last LP was released, but it was not the last one they recorded. Let It Be was recorded before Abbey Road, but released afterwards. So it was their last release this day in 1970. Of course, they'd already broken up by now. And in 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted in Washington State, causing the largest landslide in history, killing 57 people and costing $1 billion in damages. Well, let's get into our births. Uh, on May 16, 1905, the great actor Henry Fonda, 1919, Liberace. I wish my brother George were here. 1946, guitarist Robert Fripp, 1951, musician Jonathan Richman, and another musician, 1966, Janet Jackson. May 17, one great prosecutor, Archibald Cox. 1942, musician Taj Mahal. 1965, another musician, Trent Reznor. And on this date in 1866, Nicholas II, the last czar of Russia, is born. That's all. 1883, founder of the Bauhaus, well, co-founder, Walter Gropius is born. 1897, Film director Frank Capra did so many wonderful films, like It's a Wonderful Life, just name one. 1912, Mr. Relaxation himself, Harry Como. 1920, Pope, now Saint, John Paul II. 1931, actor Robert Morris, you might remember from Mad Men, or How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. 1931, one of my favorite cartoons from Mad Magazine, Don Martin. 1934, Dwayne Hickman from Dobie Gillis. And 1970, one of the funniest people alive, Tina Fey. Well, now we cover our deaths. On May 16, incredible guitarist Jang Ho Reinhardt. 1984, uh, we lost Andy Kaufman. Or did we? 1985, Margaret Hamilton. And your little dog, too! 1990, Muppet creator Jim Henson. 1990, singer, writer, actor. He could do everything. Sammy Davis Jr. And uh, let's see, on May 17, we lost, in 1829, the first U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Jay. 
1992, wonderful, wonderful, Lawrence Welk passed away. 2005, Incredible Mimic and The Riddler on Batman, Frank Gorshin, and 2012, Disco Star, Donna Summer. May 18th, composer, 1911, Gustav Mahler. 1973, Jeanette Rankin, American politician, first woman elected to the U.S. Congress. 1981, uh, writer William Saroyan, there's a street in San Francisco named after him. Well, it's not exactly a street, but it's right by Specs Bar in North Beach. 1988, Dawes Butler, a name you might not be familiar with, except he was the voices of Huckleberry Hound and, of course, Yogi Bear. Hey, boo-boo! 1995, star bewitched Elizabeth Montgomery. 2017, Fox News founder, Roger Ailes, and this just in, Ken Osmond passed away today, Eddie Haskell on the Leave It to Beaver. Well, that wraps it up for this edition. Until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay inside. If you go outside, wear a mask. Don't be stupid, be smart. We're hearing a lot of stupid talk lately from our supposed leaders. They don't know that I'm actually in charge, but I'm not calling the shots on this one. I wish I were. <laughs>